Imagine a weapon so advanced that it can destroy an enemy aircraft before it even knows it's under attack. A missile system designed to protect the skies, guarding against the deadliest threats during one of the most tense and dangerous periods in history, the Cold War. If you've ever wondered how technology evolved to defend nations from aerial strikes, you're in the right place. In this video, we're diving deep into the history of a remarkable weapon, the Rapier Missile System. This cutting-edge technology shaped the way countries approached air defense. Want to know how it all started? Or how this system revolutionized military strategy and saved lives? Stick with us as we unravel the fascinating story behind this innovative creation. But that's not all. We'll also take a look at real combat situations where the rapier proved itself in action, defending British forces and beyond. So buckle up and get ready to explore the rise of one of the most iconic missile systems ever built. If you've ever wondered how air defense changed the game for modern warfare, this video is for you. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll have a newfound appreciation for military technology. Let's get started. The story of the rapier missile system begins during one of the most intense eras in recent history the Cold War. From 1947 to 1991, tensions between Western countries and the Soviet Union ran high. Both sides were locked in a competition, not only for political influence but also for military superiority. One of the biggest concerns for the West was the development of Soviet combat aircraft that could operate at low altitudes and high speeds, making them difficult to detect and even harder to intercept. To respond to this growing threat, Countries like Britain needed a solution that could safeguard their airspace. The British Aircraft Corporation, BAC, seeing this pressing need, began working on a private venture called Sightline in the early 1960s. At first, this was an internal project aimed at creating a missile system capable of defending against low-flying aircraft. But soon, the British Army took notice, especially as their hopes in the American-made MIM-46 Mahler anti-aircraft system were dashed when the project faced technical issues. The British Army, understanding the potential of a homegrown solution, began to fund Sightline, and the project was renamed Rapier. This moment marked a critical turning point in the development of the system, as the Army's investment ensured that this project had the resources it needed to succeed. By the late 1960s, the Rapier system was ready for testing. After several rounds of evaluation, it was deemed effective enough to enter production. The British Army formally adopted the Rapier in 1971, and the Royal Air Force followed in 1974. Initially, the missile system was transported on a towed-wheeled trailer, which made it somewhat cumbersome. However, its design allowed it to house four missiles on launchers, positioned around a central cylinder that contained the radar unit. This setup gave the Rapier system the ability to target multiple enemy aircraft at once, providing an effective means of airspace denial. The Rapier missile itself was 2.29 meters long and weighed 45 kilograms. It was capable of reaching speeds up to Mach 2.5, which means it traveled more than twice the speed of sound. This speed was crucial because it gave enemy aircraft very little time to react once the missile was launched. The missile's range extended from as close as 400 meters to as far as 6,800 meters, making it a versatile tool for defending against various types of aerial threats. However, the system wasn't without its limitations. The original Rapier design was not equipped to operate in all weather conditions, which significantly reduced its tactical value. Imagine being in a battlefield situation where the weather suddenly shifts and your defense system becomes useless. That's not something you want to deal with in high-stakes scenarios. To fix this, engineers at BAC worked on developing the Marconi DN-181 Blindfire Radar Unit, which allowed the system to function effectively in any weather. The all-weather capability was a game-changer, and by 1979, these upgrades were added to the British Rapier Inventory. Interestingly, the upgraded rapier system had already made its way to Iran, a British ally at the time, in 1973. This showed just how valuable and in-demand the system was, even before its full potential was realized in the British forces. In 1974, another major innovation came with the introduction of the tracked rapier. This was a mobile version of the missile system, built onto an M548 tracked carrier, which was based on the American M113 armored personnel carrier. The mobility of this new system was a huge advantage for military forces. No longer did they have to rely on the relatively stationary towed version of the rapier. Instead, they could quickly relocate their missile systems in response to changing battlefield conditions. The tracked system was adopted by the British Army in 1982, just in time for one of the most significant conflicts of the era, the Falklands War. 
the Falklands War provided the first real test of the rapier system in combat. British forces were deployed to reclaim the Falkland Islands after they were invaded by Argentina. One of the biggest threats to British ground and naval forces was the Argentine Air Force, which launched numerous aerial attacks. The rapier system played a crucial role in defending British positions, reportedly shooting down over a dozen enemy aircraft. Although there is some debate about the exact number of kills, there's no denying the system's effectiveness in helping the British regain control of the islands. Over the following decades, the rapier missile system continued to evolve. As new threats emerged, such as cruise missiles and drones, engineers worked to ensure that the rapier remained a viable air defense option. In addition to its anti-aircraft capabilities, an anti-vehicle variant was also developed, further expanding the system's utility on the battlefield. By this time, the rapier family had grown to include several different versions, such as the MK-1, anti-aircraft, the MK-2A, an improved version, and the MK-2B, anti-vehicle. The rapier's success wasn't limited to British forces. It was also adopted by numerous other countries, including Iran, Kenya, Libya, Indonesia, Singapore, Turkey, Switzerland, and the United Arab Emirates. This widespread use demonstrates the system's versatility and effectiveness across different regions and combat scenarios. By the 1990s, over 25,000 rapier missiles had been produced, along with 600 launcher units and 350 radar systems. The sheer scale of production shows just how essential this missile system became for many nations' air defense strategies. Despite its longevity, even the rapier system eventually faced competition from more advanced technologies. In the 1990s, the British Army began phasing out the towed versions of the rapier in favor of the newer Starstreak missile system, which was mounted on the Alvis Stormer tracked combat vehicle. However, the rapier continued to serve in many capacities, adapting to meet the challenges of modern warfare. Today, the rapier missile system remains in service with the British Army's Royal Artillery, continuing its role in defending the skies. While its design has evolved, the rapier's core function as a reliable rapid response air defense system has made it a lasting icon in the world of military technology. The story of the rapier missile system is not just about technology, it's about innovation, adaptation, and the relentless pursuit of safety and defense. From its humble beginnings as a private venture to its role in shaping modern air defense strategies, the rapier has truly left its mark. If you found this story fascinating, there's a lot more where that came from. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below with your thoughts. What do you think is the most impressive aspect of the rapier system? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.